Everybody, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV football and basketball analyst Blaine Fowler. This is a True Blue Extra, and we're nice. Uh, we're happy that you logged on as we talk about BYU and Georgia Tech coming up this weekend in Atlanta. Yeah, that's going to be a big one, a very different game uh, than the matchup we saw against Notre Dame. And Notre Dame is a very good defensive football team, very basic offensively. I would call them a mediocre offense, especially for a top five team. Right. This is just the opposite. This is a prolific running football team that's averaging 37 points a game in Georgia Tech, but they can't stop anybody. So we may actually see BYU's offense break out this week. The question is, will you know that linebacking core, that's a lot of pressure on the linebackers when you're playing the option, will they be, you know, be able to get out on those edges and prevent Georgia Tech from getting big plays in the run game? Do you think BYU has the mentality to go back to Atlanta and win a game like this? This, this is a tough one. Before the season started, we knew Notre Dame would be tough mm -hmm. on the road, but I almost worried more about going to South Bend, and if you don't get a victory there, flying all the way back to Salt Lake City, and then making the trip and a completely different game plan right. to be able to recover and play against Georgia Tech. But I think at 4-4, four four, they have to. This, this is a mental challenge. BYU has the athletes to beat Georgia Tech. They should beat Georgia Tech. Uh, if they don't, it will be because uh, they're having a hard time getting over that, that Notre Dame loss and uh, managing the travel. You figure Georgia Tech's going to look at the game film. They're going to go, you know what, we need to keep Riley in the pocket and make him pass. Yeah, no question about it. But I don't know that they have the horses to be able to do that. I think BYU will actually find some room in the run game this week. The, the Georgia Tech has speed, but they're not nearly as physical as Notre Dame was. Notre Dame's front seven, especially those, you know, the four guys up front, those guys were beasts. I mean, they were big-time physical guys, and uh, it was hard for BYU to manage those guys. Now, Georgia Tech has quickness, but they're not nearly as physical as Notre Dame. I think BYU will find more running room against this team. That Y factor in the Notre Dame game, Brandon Ogletree, as I projected picked him. By I yourself. picked him. He was in on some very big hits, and uh, he was uh, on True Blue a couple of weeks ago and kind of an engaging fellow. The defense did everything that they needed to do, and Brandon Ogletree, you know, the heart of that defense. He's right in the middle, run sideline to sideline, such a great run defender, not afraid to stick his nose, and I loved this tackle. He had seven tackles on the game, three solo, and that was a big third down play where he made that play, and then our game changer was Jamal Williams. How about the 17-year-old mm -hmm. going into the storied Notre Dame Stadium and not even having it face him? I mean, I thought he played very well. He didn't seem that, uh, um, you know, anything got to him in terms of the pressure or the environment what a, what a good what a good player for 17 years old I mean he he seems like he's 21 22 year old senior one thing that you brought out in the broadcast is he uh, he doesn't lose the football no and that that is the thing that you usually worry about with young players yeah. they don't secure the ball he keeps it high and tight and BYU did not put the ball on the ground in that ball game, and Jamal Williams was the primary ball carrier, so that was an accomplishment. We got to give Jamal a helmet sticker. This might be Jamal's first of. Yeah, I, this is. I mean, Cody's got a bunch of them on here, yeah. and Kyle Van Noy's got some, but we're going to give Jamal Williams a helmet sticker uh, for this one. He did a, a great job, and and uh, I thought he was very poised in a big, big setting. Well, let's look at the film session uh, and dive into some of what worked in South Bend. And uh, we'll start with uh, the tight end. I like BYU when they go their heavy set, three tight ends. Here's Connie Kuafriel as the third tight end. And BYU's going to go play action. And the linebackers, everybody's going to flow toward the run play. And then Connie Kuafriel is going to sneak across and catch a crossing route. We'll take a look. Here comes the play action. There he is, sneaks across. Now we're going to watch it in isolation because I want you to see what happens to the linebacker who's responsible for coverage. Here he is. We'll stop it right there. Look at his. He's supposed to cover Friel, but his hips are closed because he's reacting to the run play. There's no way for him to be able to open his hips now and run with Friel, so he'll get over the top of the linebacker, and that's all you need, just a little room down the goal line. Bam, there's the throw on time, and it's a touchdown pass. That's all it takes. You just move those linebackers a little bit in play action, and you can take advantage of those big tight ends down the goal line. I really like it when BYU goes three tight ends down in the goal line area. Let's see what they can do on Saturday. We've got some basketball this week. The yes. uh, Cougar tip-off is Wednesday night on BYUTVSports.com, and then we're in business Friday night for the first exhibition game. Yeah, I'm watching these first few games, particularly at the guard line. Can, can BYU get improved play on the guard line, more consistent scoring, and you know, can Carlino take care of the basketball? We always talk about young guys. We talked about Jamal right. Williams. Yeah. Securing the ball as a young running back. Young point guards are usually, a, a you know, that's a recipe for disaster, putting the ball in a young point guard's hands. 
and he had flashes of brilliance last year, but he also had times when he turned the ball over at inopportune times. I think a year later, we're going to see much improved play, and that's what I'm watching for early in the season. And word we're getting from, uh, from practice is that uh, Davies is a monster. Yeah, well, he is. We know and that. Now a senior and uh, has elevated uh, his game, and, and we're looking forward to seeing him Friday night. Yeah, he's a given, and, and he is a matchup problem. He's got so much quickness for uh, as big as he is, and he can, he can post you up. And he can play physical down low. If you put a big guy on him, he's just so quick. He'll just take that drop step and get to the front of the rim. So he's a monster. He's a given. We know he's going to be good. And if we get the guard line to play well alongside you know, Davies in that post position, this could be a good basketball team. It's another busy week here on BYU TV. For Blaine Fowler, I'm Dave McCann. This has been a True Blue Extra. We'll see you Monday night at 8.30 Eastern time for True Blue as we're there every week uh, throughout the year. And, of course, basketball Wednesday, Friday. Count on the kickoff on Saturday. You're going to go be to New York and all yeah, that stuff New York, in between. Then back for basketball and then football. This is a great week. This you're, is what it's all about. You're man. phenomenal. Fascinating. See you.